I was trying to capture some inspiration around my flowers in my flower garden, but of course, when I turn the camera on, there are no bumblebees. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Coos Art Museum's online art classes, where we bring the art into your home. And today I'm gonna to show you how to draw your own fuzzy, friendly bumblebee. I'm gonna do this two different ways. I'm gonna draw traditionally, but then I'm going to show you a little bit more up close digitally so that you can see beyond my hand. Now to draw our bumblebee, we're going to start off with some basic shapes and I'm going to use mostly circles for this. I'm going to use one slightly larger circle for the middle part of the bumblebee's body. And I don't know the anatomy of bumblebee's bodies, so if you do, let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to use a smaller circle that's kind of overlaps so it's like a half circle for his head and then a larger ovalish circle for the bumblebee's, well, bumble. <laughs> So these three circles kind of remind me of like a snowman that has fallen over. Now, once you have these three shapes drawn, now it's time to start putting in a few of the details. So I'm going to indicate where the eyes are by putting in some kind of some little circle shapes around the head area. After that, I'm going to move on to drawing the legs of my bumblebee. Now you can do this two different ways. You can do it super easy and just create six little lines coming out because he's an insect, so he has six legs. Or if you wanna get super hyper detailed, you can look at some reference photos or if you're brave, look up close at a bumblebee at his actual legs. They're really cool looking. I'm gonna create the three legs on the side closest to me and I'm gonna be able to see all three of those. But on the other side, I'm going to have to overlap those. And I'm going to use my imagination as to where they are because you're only gonna see just a little bit of them because most of them are hidden behind his body. So I'll see the front one, but not so much the other two. Now to create his wings, I'm going to use a triangle shape, but I'm going to round the corners out. There are so many different shapes that can make an insect's wings. Even in the bumblebee world, their wings differ from variation of bumblebee. I don't even know how many different bumblebees there are out there. I'll have to look that up. So the bumblebee has two main wings and then two smaller wings underneath. Adding in his cute little antennae and our bumblebee sketch is just about done. So I'm gonna clean up this sketch and go back over it with inking lines. Now, if you're drawing this traditionally, you can do that by just gently erasing your drawing until the pencil marks are super light. Then you can go back in with a darker pencil or even an ink pen to add in your color. Now here's a tip for drawing the fuzziness of a bumblebee. Instead of drawing one single line around the shape, make tiny little lines all around. That will give us the appearance of the fuzzy bumblebee. It's completely up to you if you want to add color, and you can do that with color pencils, watercolor, markers. I'm doing it digitally. Um, but let me jump over back to my traditional piece and show you how that process works. I wanna use watercolor on my bumblebee, so the first thing I think about before even starting drawing my piece is what kind of paper I'm going to use. If I try to do watercolor on just regular drawing paper, I'm gonna find that the that it might buckle or warp or the paper's just going to wear out because it's not meant for a lot of water. So I'm starting off with a watercolor postcard and I got this at my local art store. The ink pen I'm using is a Copic Multiliner and these are great because they're water resistant so I can put markers or water over top of that. Another great brand is your Sakura Microns and I'm using a really fine tipped one. I think this one was a 0 0.01 so it's really fine but my favorite one is a 0 0.03 because it's not too big and not too thin. If you do create your own bumblebee, we would love to see what it looks like. So make sure to follow us on social media and tag us in your posts. I'll leave information to our social media in the description box below. The last thing I'm going to do for my bumblebee is add a little bit of a cast shadow. That's going to give it a nice 3D appearance like he's actually just sitting on top of my page. For more information about other classes we're offering at the Coos Art Museum, visit our website at www.coosart.org. So until next time, stay creative.